learners of Biotechnica, welcome back again. Today I'll be talking about gametogenesis, very specifically spermatogenesis. You'll have this topic in unit number 5, developmental biology, as well as in system physiology in animals. So let's talk about it in detail. Spermatogenesis. What is this spermatogenesis? So genesis means formation. Spermatogenesis means the process of formation of sperms in the testis. So if we have to talk about human being as an example, a main human being, after the puberty, this usually actually takes place. So we know there's going to be a pair of testis and I'm drawing only one testis and this outermost layer is called as tunica albugina. And there is infoldings of this tunica albugina which makes kind of compartments and these compartments are called as testicular compartments and you can literally see 200 to 300 testicular compartments or we can say testicular lobules also and every lobule is going to have a tube-like structure which we can say it's going to be seminiferous tubules. This green part is going to be the seminiferous tubule. So two to three seminiferous tubules are going to be present here. And there are some spaces that you can actually see in between this area. This is going to be the interstitial spaces. And this interstitial spaces is going to have an important cell. This cell is called as Leydig cell. Leydig cell. And now we might be having a question. In the testis, where exactly the sperm production is going to take place? In the testis, it is going to be in the seminiferous tubules. In this tube part, the sperm production is actually going to take place. So let's understand where is the location? What are the cells that are involved in it? What are the hormones that actually controls the production of sperms? The first point you can see, it occurs in the seminiferous tubules of the testis. Yes, so the sperm production takes place in the seminiferous tubules of the testis. And what are the cells that are involved in it? Consist of primordial germ cells, Sertoli cells and Leydig cells. So you can remember PLS. So there are three cells which are mainly responsible for it. Primordial germ cells, Leydig and Sertoli cells. Now, where is this Leydig cells present? Just now we have seen it is actually present in the interstitial spaces. Between the seminiferous tubules, this Leydig cell is present. What about primordial germ cells? and Sertoli germ cells or we can say Sertoli cells. So if I have to draw a seminiferous tubules, I'm drawing a seminiferous tubule. So inside this only these two cells are going to play an important role. There are some pyramid like structure cell you can see and this cell is mainly responsible for providing nourishments for the production of the sperms and these cells are called as Sertoli cells. These cells are called as Sertoli cells and you can see a lot of cuboidal cells that are actually present in between them lot of cuboidal cells these are cuboidal cells which are actually present and these cuboidal like cells are called as primordial germ cells or you can call it spermatogonium so a seminiferous tubule is going to have two cells and outside area you will see a lot of Leydig cells. So outside you will be seeing a lot of Leydig cells will be present and all these three cells are going to play an important role in case of spermatogenesis. Now what are the hormones that are actually involved in it? There are going to be luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, testosterone, androgen binding hormone and inhibins are actually going to be present. So let's talk about where is this luteinizing hormone produced from and all these hormones are actually coming from. We know that a hypothalamus is going to play an important role. So this hypothalamus is actually going to produce an important hormone called as gonadotrophin releasing hormone. And this gonadotrophin releasing hormone is going to stimulate the anterior part of the pituitary. We used to call it adenohypophysis. And they are going to stimulate the production of two important hormones which are going to be luteinizing hormone. Another one is going to be a follicle stimulating hormone. 
and I already told you this luteinizing hormone just remember it goes and binds to the Leydig cell which is present in the interstitial spaces. So this is going to be the Leydig cell. So this Leydig cell is going to have a specific receptor for the binding of this luteinizing hormone. As soon as it comes and binds here, it used to send a signal and it stimulate the gene expressions. And ultimately, there's going to be production of enzymes. And this enzyme is the one which actually converts a cholesterol into a testosterone. So without a testosterone, there is no production of a sperm and testosterone has derived from a cholesterol, which means they are lipid loving molecules. They are going to be lipophilic molecule. They are lipophilic molecule. So you should remember LH goes and binds to the Leydig cells first and then they are going to produce the testosterone, which means if you have to talk about a testis, so first there is going to be a Leydig cell which will be present outside and the seminiferous tubules inside that only we are seeing this germ cells and Sertoli cells and this Leydig cell sends this testosterone inside. Only when the testosterone goes inside, the sperm production can actually take place. Now, what about this follicle stimulating hormone? This follicle stimulating hormone is going to play a very beautiful role. This follicle stimulating hormone will go to the seminiferous tubule. And in the seminiferous tubule, it is going to go and bind to the Sertoli cells. And in the Sertoli cells, it is going to produce an important hormone called as Sertoli cells produces androgen binding hormone. Androgen binding protein we can say a b p androgen binding protein and what's the purpose of this androgen binding protein this is taking place in the inside this uh, seminiferous tubules and what's the role of this i told you the testosterone is going to be more lipid loving molecule but if a lipid loving molecule is going to be present inside a seminiferous tubules it's not going to be accommodated very commonly or properly inside it so for that sake this androgen binding hormone is going to make a testosterone less lipophilic it makes the testosterone less lipophilic lipophilic because they are more they have a capacity to like lipids a lot so they make it less lipophilic so that the testosterone stays inside. Now we have the testosterone synthesized inside and they have become a less lipophilic molecule. And now the process of sperm production takes place, which is going to be spermatogenesis is going to take place. So all these hormones involved, inhibin is going to be a hormone which is going to be prevent uh, the production of the sperms. This inhibin is also secreted from the Sertoli cells. Okay. Now, what about this spermatogenesis? Let's talk about spermatogenesis, what exactly is going to take place. So inside the seminiferous tubules, you can find a primordial germ cell or a spermatogonium cell. And this spermatogonium cell is definitely going to be a diploid cell. It is going to be a diploid cell. And this cell is actually going to undergo mitosis. It's going to undergo mitosis. And they're going to form two important cells, which are going to be a type A dark cell. Type A dark cell. And this is going to be a type A pale cell. Type A pale cell. Dark cell and a pale cell. And this dark cell will become a stem cell this dark cell become a stem cell whereas this pale cell is going to give rise to another important cell which is called as type B cell. This is also diploid. This is going to be type B cell and this type B cell is the one which is actually going to become the precursor for the sperm cells whereas type A dark cells are going to become the reserve for the stem cells we can say. Yes. So after this type B cell, it is diploid cell. It is going to undergo meiosis, which is a reductional division. Meiosis 1 and it forms a haploid 2 cells. Haploid 2 cells. And then it going to undergo meiosis 2 to form 4 cells. And then finally, these are non-functional spermatids and they will form functional sperms. 
So we'll be talking all these things detail and then they form a functional sperms. So now let's understand what is given in the mind map. A spermatogonial cell and germ cells are cuboidal cells. Yes, which multiply by mitosis. Yes, it has multiplied by mitosis and they have given type A, type A dark and type A pale. And then they have given type B cell. And this type B cells grows large in number and then uh, they increases the size and then they undergo my meiosis to form four spermatids which are actually non-functional. They are non-motile in nature so they are non-functional. And finally this spermatids undergoes a process called as spermiogenesis. So the conversion of a non-motile or a non-functional spermatid into a functional movable sperms is called as spermiogenesis. This is going to be the complete process of spermatogenesis. Now, what are the phases that are actually involved in the process of spermatogenesis? The first is going to be a multiplication phase. The second is going to be a growth phase. The third is a maturation phase. And the fourth is the differentiation phase. So now let's understand what are the phases in detail. The first phase is going to be the multiplication phase. So we know in the seminiferous tubules, there are Sertoli cells. Let me consider this is going to be the Sertoli cells and this is going to be the Sertoli cells. And in between only you actually see some cells. So with this Sertoli cells are actually attached by some adherence junctions or tight junctions. And here at the basement compartment or basal compartment only, you're going to see the cells. So this cell is called as the PG cells or we can say primordial germ cells or we can call it spermatogonium spermatogonium. So I already told you this spermatogonium is going to undergo mitosis. So you can see during multiplication phase, this PGC cells is going to multiply several times to produce a spermatogonial cells. So you are going to get a lot of spermatogonial cells. And now this spermatogonial cells divides a lot and it forms a type A dark, type A dark, and they form a type B dark or we can say type A pale and then it forms type B. And this type A becomes a germ cell or we can say a stem cell. And whereas this give rise to a complete type B cell. Type B cell. And this type B cell is also going to be deployed. And this type B cell is only precursor for the formation of the sperm. It's a precursor of sperm cell. So this is going to be the multiplication phase. And everything will happen in this part itself before that. The Sertoli cell's role is to move the adherent junctions or tight junction and they will bring everything to the lumen part. Suppose this is going to be the complete seminiferous tubule. This is going to be the lumen. So all these things will come over here. So in the next phase, the mature cells will come into the lumen phase. So you can see type of spermatogonia cells are going to be type A and type B. And type A spermatogonial cell serves as a stem cells. Again, they will become a spermatogonium. Whereas type B spermatogonium serves as a precursor for the germ cell. So you should remember type B is the one which actually give rise to a sperm cell. Type B spermatogonia are the ones which undergoes meiosis to form spermatids and finally into a spermatozoa or we can say sperm. Now, after this, the next phase is called as the growth phase. So during growth phase, what is going to happen? So we already know there's going to be a type B cell, type B cell. And this type B cell is definitely going to be deployed in nature. And what this type B cell is going to do, this type B spermatogonia, we can say very specifically spermatogonia, spermatogonia type B spermatogonia is actually going to get nourishments and they're going to receive all the testosterone definitely so testosterone is going to play an important role in uh, production of all the steps so now what's going to happen after receiving the nourishments from the Sertoli cells they are going to grow large in number they become very big they become very big and now this grown cell is called as primary spermatocyte they are called as primary spermatocytes. Till now it is going to be a diploid cell. 
This is also a diploid cell. So you can see during the growth phase, the type 2 spermatogonia acquires nourishments from the Sertoli cells and grows actively. And this actively grown large cells are now called as a primary spermatocytes. So the next phase is going to be maturation phase. So in this phase, what's going to happen? There is a primary spermatocyte which is after getting nourishment, it has grown very well. Now it is going to undergo meiosis 1 which is a reductional division. So it is going to undergo meiosis 1 and now they are going to divide into a two cell which are going to be haploid in nature. And these cells are referred to as secondary spermatocytes. The haploid cells are called secondary spermatocytes. Now these cells undergo meiosis 2. These cells undergo meiosis 2 and you will get four haploid cells. Four haploid cells and they can be X containing ones and Y containing ones. And this is referred to as spermatids. And this complete process is called as maturation phase. So you can see each large primary spermatocytes undergo two successive meiotic division which is meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. During first meiotic division two secondary spermatocytes which are haploids are formed you can see here and then during the second meiotic division four haploid spermatids are formed and these spermatids are non-functional because they do not have a flagella they do not have a tail, so they are non-motal in nature and they are non-differentiated cells, they are non-functional. But a sperm has to be motile. So what's going to be the next phase is differentiation phase. The next step is going to be differentiation. So now, this spermatids, which are actually going to be non-functional, has to be converted into a functional phase or a functional sperms. And differentiation means the phase at which the sperm becomes functional. So four haploid spermatids which are formed will be differentiated into a functional sperms. Now it will form four functional sperms. You can get four functional sperms. And all will be X containing, some will be Y containing. And the X containing sperms are called as gynosperms. And the Y containing sperms are called as androsperms. And the conversion of the spermatids to sperm is called as spermiogenesis. It's not spermatogenesis. This process is called as spermiogenesis. So this process is known as spermiogenesis. But after the production of this sperms, these sperms will be present in the seminiferous tubules. If you remember, it will be present in these tubes. Then it has to be carried to the retitestis efferentia and then to epididymis. It will go to the epididymis region. So in the epididymis regions, it will be stored and then it will be matured. So spermiation occurs in 64 days. We'll be talking about what is the spermiation and how does a spermatid has become a sperm. So now we have four haploid spermatids which are actually formed. And from a haploid spermatids which are actually non-functional, how a sperm functional sperm is actually formed. So how a functional sperm is formed and this process is called as spermiogenesis as we already know. But how does the structure actually gets changed? So we know there is going to be Golgi bodies. This Golgi bodies is the one which actually forms the acrosome in the head. So this is going to be the acrosomes. This is going to be the acrosomes which are actually Golgi bodies only. And then they are going to have a nucleus here. So this is going to be the condensed nucleus. And then they make up the head part. And this is going to be the head part. And in the head part, beneath the nucleus, they are going to have a centriole. And the centriole which is close to the nucleus is called as proximal centriole. Proximal centriole. And the below one is called as distal centriole. The one which is beneath is called as the distal centriole. And there is going to be a very small piece which we used to call it as neck. So this is going to be the head part and this is going to be the neck part and then there's going to be the middle piece. This is going to be the middle piece 
and beneath it's going to be the tail. So this is going to be the tail. And in the middle piece, since the sperm has to move a bit faster, it needs a lot of energy, ATP. So they are going to have a mitochondria which is actually present here. And this mitochondria is called as Nebun kern. It is called Nebun kern. And then from the distal centrioles, there arises a lot of axial filament like this. So this is going to be the axial filament. And the tail is going to have a very limited uh, amount of cytoplasm, we can say. So what are the changes that you see in sperms? In sperms, the Golgi apparatus forms the acrosome part. And this acrosome is the one which is going to have a lot of hydrolytic enzymes. So it is the one which actually cleaves the zona pellucida and enters into the egg. So present in the head or region of the sperm. And then there is a formation of the flagella, yes. And then the separation of centrioles, distal centrioles and proximal centrioles are there. And the nucleus got condensed. And formation of axial filament from the distal centriole. So that is the changes that actually take place. And this process is called as spermiogenesis. Now, the sperm is actually produced in the seminiferous tubules. Now, it has to go and store in the epididymis. For the movement, it needs yet another nourishment also. So what the sperm will do is, the sperm will go and bind to the Sertoli cells and get all the nourishments. After getting all the nourishments from the Sertoli cells, they will be released from the Sertoli cells. So the release of sperms after getting nourishments from the Sertoli cells are called as spermiation. And this spermiation occurs in 64 days. So you can see the process of release of sperms from the Sertoli cell is called spermiation. And the sperms are released from the seminiferous tubules and travel to retitestis, efferentia and then to the epididymis and stored in the epididymis for almost about a month and acquires nourishments there also in the epididymis, especially from the epithelial cells of the epididymis and which will help the sperms to gain motility and get matured over there, which can be now becoming a matured a sperm which can perform fertilization. So today what we have studied is we were actually talking about how is the process of spermatogenesis actually takes place. So we started with what are the cells that are involved in it, where is the location, seminiferous tubules, what are the hormones that are involved in it, luteinizing, follicle stimulating, testosterone, androgen binding proteins, inhibits, and then we talked about the phases, what are the multiplication phase, growth phase, maturation phase, differentiation phase and this is the diagram that we have actually drawn in the complete process where we have seen the spermatogonium undergoing mitosis and produces type A dark, type A pale. Type A dark is becoming a stem cells whereas type A pale will give rise to type B spermatogonium and this type B spermatogonium only becomes the germ cell or it finally forms the sperm. And this type B spermatogonium grows large in numbers and they are called as primary spermatocyte which is deployed in nature. And this primary spermatocytes undergo meiosis 1 to form 2 haploid sets and then meiosis 2 to form 4 haploid spermatids which are non-functional. And then the non-functional spermatid will be converted into a functional sperm and that process is called spermiogenesis. And then we talked about the differences of what is spermatogenesis, which is the production of sperms completely in the male reproductive system. And what is spermiogenesis from spermatids to sperms. And then we talked about what is spermiation, the release of sperm from the septoli cells after nourishments and then moving towards the epididymis for maturation purposes. And I hope this video is helpful for you. If you really like this video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. And then you can also come back and visit us back again. We are coming up with many more mind maps also. Thank you all of you for joining and I'm going to meet you back again with yet another topic. Thank you.